They only say one player can make a difference between a Stanley Cup and a squad staying in an association or a league. Now, in Pittsburgh, of the uh, good life and fast death of Michel Breer. Now, the uh, the resident of Maritick, Quebec, uh, died on April 13, 71, from injuries he sustained in a car accident almost a year before. Now, he was a great player for Shawinigan Bruins in 68-69. He scored 129 goals and 320 points in those two campaigns. Drafted third overall, third round, 26 overall by the Penguins. Could have been easily a uh, first-round pick. Now, he led the Q in points in 68 and 69. He made the All-Star team as the second squad in 68 and was the first All-Star team member in 69. Now, he won the 69 Memorial Cup, played the 69 Memorial Cup with Sorrell. Now, one of the top rookies in the NHL in the 1970 season, he had 44 points, including 12 goals and 32 assists, and really shone in the playoffs with 8 points in 10 games. He played on a big line, one of the original French Connection lines of the era, with Dean Prentice and the great Jean Pronovo. First NHL game as a 19-year-old was against Oakland, who he helped defeat in the playoffs four straight for Pittsburgh's first, first postseason win uh, in the 70 playoffs. First goal was the same night Dean Prentice scored his 300, and that was against Minnesota. But his final NHL game, of course, was against St. Louis in April 30, 1970 playoffs. Now, he's vaunted number 21, has since been retired by Pittsburgh. Nobody's ever wore it. And number 21, for a lot of teams, is seen as a tribute to Breer's skill. He could have easily been a 30-40 goal man for several years for Pittsburgh, especially when he needed him in that mid-1970s era where they were knocking on the door of a frozen four appearance. Now, he scored his first NHL goal in front of 6,000 fans at his Civic Arena, and Briere's goal again came during Red Kelly's first win for Pittsburgh. Now, after the game, Prentice told reporters he felt Briere had a bright future and would probably score 300 goals like him. Now, he led again Pittsburgh with 30, 32 assists as a rookie in that 70 campaign. But his big goal, goal of course, was scored uh, at 8.28 of overtime to secure a 4 nothing sweep against the Seals. This goal was how it scored April 12th in Oakland. You know, Breer's counter was the first overtime winner in Penguins history and also clinched the first series. He was Pittsburgh's Rookie of the Year for 1969-70 and the award was renamed in his honor the following year. Following Breer's tragic death, no player wore number 21 again. It was only officially uh, uh, put aside on January 5, 2001 at a home game that also referenced Lemieux coming back. So Le Lemieux's number wasn't taken down, but he was re-given to Mario to play, and uh, Mike's number uh, went up in, uh, in, uh, in its place. Now, we present details of the passing not to exploit his memory, but just as a fact, and this has been a request for a number of followers of the channel to let the people know how much Briere uh, talent meant to the people that followed his career. Now, the accident occurred May 15, 1970, in his newly bought sports car. It put him in a coma for several months until his passing. The crash happened eight miles north of his native uh, Malartic, where he had returned after his rookie season to make plans for his marriage, which was to occur June 6, to the, great, the beautiful Michel Baudouin, with whom he already had a son. He had purchased a new car with the bonus money he had earned for the 70 playoffs, but on a late afternoon drive on Highway 117, he lost control and crashed into a tree. The, uh, according to accident reconstruction ex experts, there was a bend in the road that was seemed to be dangerous, and he hit it, unfortunately, at high speed. Now, Briere's car went off the road at that spot. He was thrown from the car, and his head smashed into a nearby rock. Two other men, uh, Renal Bilodeau, Briere's best friend, Yvonne Fortin, were also in the car and were also injured. There was even some question as to whether or not Briere was even driving the car, because Bilodeau and Fortin weren't forthcoming to tell uh, uh, police what happened. Now, although he, uh, again, although he was not killed instantly, he lapsed into a coma with a fractured skull. Incredibly, as the ambulance containing Briere rushed to the hospital and struck uh, and killed an 18-year-old named Renaud Perrault. Now, according to reports, I guess he was operating a motorcycle, got spooked, and uh, Rayo Perrault was uh, passed away in the crash. 
Uh, some people say he was walking along the highway. Other people say he was on a bike. But the uh, confirmed report said he was walking along the highway. Now, Briere was taken to Val d'Or and then flown to Notre Dame Hospital in Montreal. We had a four-hour operation to reduce blood clots on his brain. He had immediately clear he would not be playing hockey again in the next season. As the doctor said, it would only be a 50-50 chance we, we would recover. Now, as the months went on, more blood clots developed, and he started to lose weight on a daily basis. He was down at one point to 102 pounds. Now, there was a sense of hope in July that Breyer might recover, but his low weight and uh, the intravenous uh, he was being fed wasn't keeping up his uh, immune system or his uh, body mass. At that time, doctors said he had only very elementary reactions to physiotherapy. Now, on October 21st, 1970, Breyer turned 21. Now, by January 71, there was no improvement of Breyer's condition, and while play, uh, praying for his recovery, team officials publicly stated that he did not expect him to ever play hockey again if he were to come out of the coma. Now, at that time, the Penguins team had visited Breyer at the hospital while they were in Montreal for the game against the Habs. Some of the Pittsburgh players, so overcome by emotion, chose not to enter Breyer's room since he wanted to remember him as he had known him and not in the deteriorated state. Now, uh, Jack Riley, the Penguins' uh, ED, and head coach Red Kelly went into the room with Breyer. I talked to him and Red talked to him, Riley told reporters. The Penguins' executive director said, We held his hand and sometimes you got the feeling he knew who you were. By March, his condition had worsened, and death seemed imminent, although doctors said he was still clearly fighting for his life. With little hope for his survival, the decision was made to take Breyer out of the hospital and transfer him to a Montreal convalescent palliative home on March 27th. On April 4th, Pittsburgh fans honored Breyer at Mellon Arena by announcing him as the winner of the James G. Bomber plaque for contributions to Pittsburgh hockey. On the afternoon of April 13th, nine days later, weighing only 60 pounds, Breer passed away. Between May 1570 and his death 11 months later, Breer was never said to be fully conscious, although his eyes remained open, and his fiancée later said he appeared very sad and cried on a day when she thought he had improved, enough to bring his skates into the hospital room. Now, the, the connection is this. With Pittsburgh's great success in the regular season towards the playoffs in the mid-70s, you can imagine Breer on the same line with Pronovo and uh, or Rick Kehoe or Ron Schock or uh, Pierre LaRouche would have been amazing. He would have been a 100 point guy. He had the skills. He was only 20. He was just growing as a player. Now, Pittsburgh renamed his Rookie of the Year award the Michelle Breyer Trophy in 71, and the Q named his annual MVP award after him in 72. Now, the main hockey arena in his hometown is named Santa de Michel Breyer, and of course, he played with the great Jean, Jean Pronovo for Pittsburgh during the 1970 season. Now, Pronovo had said in published reports at the time he really missed uh, Mike or Michel because not only was he a good player, he was another francophone. He, uh, Pronovo said, you know, the francophone players coming out of junior at the time had a lot of skill, and this was the first one that they knew it was going to be a star. And I think dra drafting him led to Pierre LaRouche because he knew what the Q would, uh, would uh, provide. See, it wasn't the QMJHL as we know it back then as it is now. And boys, Briere's uh, goal-scoring status. I think the greatest compliment when Guy Lafer started to pick up big numbers, the people would say, well, this could be the next Michel Briere who was that good. And there's a Canadian song called Big League. I don't think it's directly influenced by it. Uh, talking about a song about a, a kid that dies on his way to the big leagues. Uh, yeah, and uh, Tom Cochran says, you may never know what might come down. Breer has missed. It's 51 years since he's passing. And every hockey fan of a certain uh, generation, including my generation, what if? People under 35 may not remember him, but we do. There was a Hockey Night in Canada game. Uh, I think it was against Toronto where Breer had a really good contest and I think it was um, Bruce McFarland said we could be looking at the future of the Peggy Pittsburgh Penguins. He only had 12 goals but like I said he started to come on in the second half and he was smooth in the playoffs and he drove Oakland fans nuts with that overtime goal. He still talk about that 
uh, in the Bay Area. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our Hockey Tribute Podcast to the great Michel Breer and the other uh, key uh, key stars of the NHL of the 60s, 70s, 80s, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And thank you again for all the requests. This was a triple request. And uh, just because it shows how intelligent and forthcoming and helpful the followers of the channel are. If it's your first time listening to the channel, just remember we have uh, more than uh, close to 2,500 podcasts on the channel, dating back a number of years. Please listen. If you like one, tell your friends. If you didn't like it, well, keep it yourself. Have a good day. Bye.